So for today, I need to teach you about substitution and maybe introduce elimination. And I'm gonna, right off the bat, show you something that I'll show you how simple this can be. If y equals 2x and y equals 6, I bet you just through logic, you can figure out what to do. Because I kept the equations really simple. Do you know what to do? What do you think? Replace the y with 6, too. Yeah, so since two, it says y equals 6, I can put the 6 here. You pull out the y, you put in the 6, and then it's 6 equals 2x, and anybody can solve that. Do you see what I mean? All right, what if it's a little more complicated? y equals 6x minus 3, and y equals 2x plus 4. Same deal. I've got y equals 2x plus 4. So wherever I see a y, I could put a 2x plus 4. I see a y right there. I can put 2x plus 4 right there. Everybody solve that one, please. Here's what you should have done. 2x plus 4 equals 6x minus 3. Noah, can you tell me step 1? I know you can do this. Subtract 2x. Excellent. Good enough. He's right. He's right. Nice job. And there's my answer. Seven fourths. Now, one more thing though. To really, really answer the question, you gotta know where these two lines would cross. And x is seven fourths, but we don't know what y is yet. We substitute again. Wherever you see x, you put a 7 fourths. Like right there, you could put a 7 fourths. And then you could figure out what y is. Do you get what I mean? I got x, but I don't have y yet. And you can get it by sticking that in there. All right, let me give you a nice, uh, simple one. Solve. If you haven't already, put this there. Catch up. I'll write this down. Not okay to just, I'm glad you're listening, but gotta try them where it won't stick when you need it. All right, could you tell me what the first step is now that I've written it out like this? So if we do minus 2x. Minus 2x from both sides. I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna write the answer up above up here. Give myself more room to work. 7x minus 17 equals 4. Next step. You then add 17 to both sides. Excellent. 7x equals 21. Ooh, that worked out nice. X equals what? 3. 3. Can I stop there? Yeah, no. Lydia. Lydia, what do I do with the x equals 3? All right, I agree. So I'm going to choose the green one. Can you guys still see the green one there? 
y equals 2x plus 4. And I could put a 3 right there. And now what is y equals? 6 plus 4, which is 10. y equals 10. See what I did there? I stuck it in to the other equation. All right. So let's try one of the ones that's in the notes here. We'll talk you through the process one more time. You solve one of the equations for one of the variables. Then you plug this into the other equation, substituting it and solving. Then you back solve for the first variable. That's what they're calling it. Like when you got x equals 3, you stick it in and back solve it for y. All right. It's all about the loneliest variable. Do you get that there's some equations that are like easy to solve for one thing, but we hard to solve for the other? Let's look at these green ones here. I don't want to have to solve for 4x and get the x alone down there. But do you get I could solve for either x or y right there and it'd be pretty easy? Solving for this one would be a pain because you'd have to do two steps. All right. So I would just pick the lonely one. These are easy to do because you do one step to it. Minus y, minus y, and I got x equals, because those canceled, 2 minus y, or negative y plus 2. And it's already solved, and now I can go stick it in the other one. One of the rules you might not know is you can't take this and stick it in the same equation it came from. It won't work. you got to stick it in the other equation. All right, so this one goes into this other equation here, and I would go in there. Would everybody please solve it the rest of the way? You're putting 2 minus y in for the x. That was a good start on the last one. But now, is that this one? I think, I think you got distracted. Solve this one. All right, so in for the x, we put 2 minus y. And then we copy the rest of the equation down here. Minus y equals 4. All right. All right, so next up, I'm going to multiply this out. 8 minus 4y minus y equals Four. Now I'm going to say 8 minus 5y equals 4. Now I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. Negative 5y equals negative 4. Then y equals 4 fifths. Did anybody else get 4 fifths? Nice. Then that means you guys were doing it right. These are not easy to do in your head. All right, it's easy to get close, but then you'll probably screw up one thing, like a negative or something like that. All right, can I just be done? No. Once you got y equals four-fifths, I'm actually going to save us the time because this one's kind of painful. Four-fifths, that's a pain in the butt. But I could have stuck it back in. I'd pick this equation. You can put it in either equation you want. And I'd put it in there, and then I could solve. And I'd be asking myself, x plus four-fifths has to equal two. And I'd think, oh, this must be one and one-fifth equals x. Okay, so here is a nice, clean, easy one. Why is it so easy, Kiernan? You're given y. Yep. So y equals negative two. So what do I do with that? Kai, where does it go? Uh, it goes into the y on the bottom equation. Excellent. Two does. Negative 2 goes there. So I got 4x uh, minus 6. No, plus 6 equals 18. 
Lydia, next up. Okay. 4x equals... What is 18 minus 6? What? And x equals 3. All right, cool. Am I done? Well, yeah, actually, because in this case, they told us why. You know what I mean? I have to go back and figure out why. They told us why. A lot of times, though, you have to go figure out the other one. But I know why and x, so I could say the answer in a point. Anybody else know how to say the answer as a point? 3, negative 2. 3, comma, negative 2. Yeah. A lot of times, the answer will be a point. If you graph them, which we did before the weekend there, we did some graphing. If you had graphed both of these to see where they crossed, that's where they would have crossed. All right. Now, they got a little bit harder, but not incredibly hard. Everybody solve this one. We're almost done. If you can just stick with me for another couple minutes, we're done. There, I stuck it in for y. See the y used to be right there? But I stuck in negative 2x plus 9. Trucky, can you multiply that out for me and tell me what you get next? Yeah, I got negative 6x plus 27 minus 2x equals 11. Perfect. Now these go together. You're on a roll. What do you get? Um, negative 8x yep. plus 27 equals 11. Negative or negative eight x equals negative sixteen divided by negative eight, and then that equals so x equals two. That's it. X equals two. On this one, we need to go back and do what's called back solve. Stick that into one of the two equations. I don't care which one. Figure out the answer and then write the answer as a point. Something comma something, and then turn it my way. And I'll tell you if you've got it right. It's two comma something. Yep, yep. Sorry. Yep. That's it. Nice job. You doing okay on this? Uh, yeah, I'm just. So when you stick the two in, it'll go in for the x, and you'll have y equals negative two times the two, and then plus nine. Did you get it? I'm guessing you get distracted. This is a two, comma on the other number would be a five. Two comma five. Okay, and now this is the toughest one. It's not even that tough. You just have to take this and stick it in for y right up there. And frankly, I think it's so much of a repeat over the last one that I'm going to say we don't need to do it. Do you get, you've got the idea on how these work? Okay. So then the only other way I want to teach you is... Like, what if it's x equals? Look at they've got it solved for x. Isn't it going to kind of work the same way? Yeah. You just stick it in for x, right? And stick it right there. And then that wouldn't be that hard. Okay. So I'm going to give you a preview of elimination. That's actually going to be tomorrow. But I have found that if I show people stuff ahead of time, just having their subconscious work on it for a few minutes... Um, means that it's a lot easier the next day.
So this is how elimination would look. And you know what's gross? Neither one of them is easy to solve for x or y. You know what I mean? So this one would be not very fun, but the elimination makes it fast and easy. Watch. I draw a line across. I add straight down, but wait. I look ahead of time and go, if I just add straight down, that's going to make 2x plus 2x makes 4x. But what if I make everything negative first? Can you do that? Yup. It's basically multiplying through with a negative 1 on both sides of the equation. And you can do that. Now, when I add straight down, what happens to those two guys? Neutralizes. They're neutralized. Yes, they're gone. And what happens to these two? What do I get with 3y and negative 4y? Negative y equals, bring that straight down? Negative 1. Negative 1. So y equals 1. You see what just happened there? See how quick that was? All right, so that's a really good method where you add straight down. That's called the elimination method. And I did it because these two eliminate. All right, you'll learn about more about that tomorrow. All right, that's all I got for that. For your worksheet for today, you're going to take a look uh, in the Schoology folder, and you will see that I've assigned you a few problems. It's time to get those started. Hold on just a sec. Let's start that first problem of the Schoology quiz together so that you can make sure you've got this down. All right, so that's y equals 5x and 4x plus 2y equals 7. Now, if y equals 5x, I can put that right here, 5x. I put it in parentheses whenever I have a variable. I put a parenthesis where it used to be. 4x plus 2 parentheses 5x equals 7. There, I substituted it in. Happy now? Nope, not until I get it down to x equals. It's 14x equals 7. 14x equals 7 fourteenths. If you tried to do it in your head, you probably thought it was 2, but it's 1 half. Who had one half before I even said one half? Nice job. Then, where do I put the one half in either equation I want? I like this one, it's easier. If I put x as one half in there, it's five times a half. So you'd have to know what a half of five is. What is it? Two and a half, 2.5. That's what half of five is. So then y must equal 2.5. And then please, your answers today, they want you to put them in a point, something comma something. You see that in the directions? Enter solution as a point. So the point on this one is one half. You can use a decimal. And 2.5. You can use a mixed number like five over two, or you could use the decimal 2.5. There's your two answers. But you put them in with a parenthesis and a comma, and then that's it. you're starting, that means you're about halfway done. My dad always used to say, if you start something, you're halfway done. It doesn't actually mean you're really halfway done, but what he was trying to say is that the hard part is just getting it started. And then once you get going, it's not that bad. All right, so that's all I got for you for the video for today.